if you're a startup and you're thinking of making money out of the bat, you're in the wrong business. Startup, the most important, important thing is not to make money, is to get market share. Because your value is to build a market share with a new tech that, number one, investor wants to put money in you so you continue to grow because you already have the market share and proven concept. Second thing is that you stop other uh, competitors from copying you or uh, replicating you fast because if you have the market share, it's really hard for them to come in. So that's the most vital thing for a startup to do. On our second Insights episode with Hong Kong PropTech Association, we talked to Akina, an innovation leader who experience both in Silicon Valley and Hong Kong. She breaks down today's PropTech scene clearly. What is proof of concept? How to negotiate the relationship between startups and corporates? How can you facilitate investment into great technologies and ideas? Let's find out. Akina, you're finally here. Yes, thank you. I've always been wanting to have a chance to interview you mm -hmm. to learn more about why you've joined HKPTA. Okay. What do you want to bring into the ecosystem okay. and what you hope Hong Kong Public Association and the industry will become? So first thing first, right? Mm -hmm. Would you mind sharing with the audience what do you think HAPTA can bring to the society? Number one, when I first heard about Hong Kong Pop Tech Association, I was like, oh my God, another Pop Tech Association, really? Um, but once I get to know the board and uh, our Chairman Vivian and MD's uh, Rainey's vision, I really believe that there are a lot of work can be done to make this a real actual platform that does add value to all tech companies, startup or either MNC, uh, and also the user side. It could be developers or it could just be a small uh, you know, property management or a small investment fund managing a lot of properties. Number one, what is prop tech? Let's answer that. Because sometimes prop tech overrides a lot of different sectors. It can go to ESG, it can go to smart city, it can go into fintech. You know, like when mortgage touches fintech and people don't think, oh, fintech is part of prop tech. It can be. If you're touching real estate loans and things like that for residential, commercial, leasing, things like that, it's prop tech. Number two is adding access. You know, and right now we're all over the places. The same entity can be talking to uh, multiple vendors and another entity is talking multiple vendors, but the pain points are not addressed because we're also different, though we're in the same sector. So who consolidates and who actually uh, uh, help make it practical to test a system without being the first guinea pig in Hong Kong or outside of Hong Kong? And hopefully with my experience as before in the Silicon Valley and building a unicorn and now being on the customer side, how to bridge the two gap because we also know that the language of understanding uh, in terms of uh, commercial, legality, and practical use of tech is very different from a startup versus a conglomerate. And someone needs to bridge that. And I think Hong Kong PTA will be that platform to, 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 to bridge those gaps. Hmm. From someone who is very intrinsically with innovation for such a long time, mm -hmm. what do you think is some people in startups mm -hmm. in Hong Kong or around the world in prop yeah. tech? What kind of mistake they have make. And at the same time as that, what kind of real estate companies that don't understand enough about prop tech mm -hmm. that you want to share with the audience? Uh, the good thing about startup is that they're starting. So it's okay to learn, learn about the mistakes. The most important thing is to get out of those uh, depressing mode and then reinvent yourself immediately the next day. Once you realize this is not working, you have to be able to pivot fast enough and go where the business is. A lot of people, a lot of founders are stuck with, oh, this is what I want to do only, though there's no market for it. Hyundai, when they first went to the US, uh, built a motorbike. Uh, they wanted to sell to people to travel from and to work. The technology was not there. They cannot go long distance. It was not fast enough, but they didn't think about the recreation side of using a motorbike and someone used it for you know, mountain biking. It became a trend. And then that's the sector where they came in and built the brand. What I'm trying to say for startup is that go where the money is, build a, a, a use case for yourself successfully, build a trend, and then from there pivot to the next level you want to be. And then maybe it would take a couple of years, a couple of months to be what you want to become later on. Take that opportunity to survive first. And then uh, second thing is for corporate. Corporate always have long bureaucratic processes and politics. We all know that it exists. If you really want to innovate, Please make sure you provide uh, someone who has power and influence in your company to work with startup. 
If not, they will die during the due diligence process. I have seen due diligence process lasting at least nine to 18 months. For a lot of startups, six months, they're dead. If it takes that long for them to sign you up, they won't be around to even service you. So at Hong Kong PTA, I'm chairing a proof of concept committee whereby I am coming uh, the mediator uh, for both startup and the client world, whereby we help uh, negotiate what a proof of concept is. And in one single point of time, we will be able to find at least one to two, three client that's a necessary developer, anybody who's willing to use it as a tech to speed up the whole proof of concept, uh, concept. I believe going through our platform will shorten any startup and any developer to use the technology at least by nine to 18 months. Depends how fast you can move, right? And then, uh, and then we will be monitoring, facilitating throughout the whole PF, uh, proof of concept. And then once it's proven and you want to use them, and then you guys can talk to each other and marry it all you want and have kids. So kind of like a matchmaker. Yes. And so when I learn about it, it's very exciting because it's an innovation with the ecosystem. Yes. There hasn't been a, a, a party yes. can, acting for that matchmaker yes. in a business sense. Without yeah. charging your arm and the leg. There are yeah. institutions that does that, but they cost you a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And then at least with Hong Kong PTA, we are non-profit. So we're here to make sure we build the ecosystem and help. And then uh, we're just charging barely uh, minimum fee. So to help facilitate the operations of the organization. And then uh, we have a lot of people who are very credible, who are very senior in this sector to be part of a lot of our subcommittees. We have an investment committee, we have a partnership committee, we have a GBA committee, and we have a content research committee, which is chaired by Darren, okay? And then from, uh, and support by heavily by Vincetti. So we are very uh, honored and very happy with all these credible, uh, well-established startup and organization to support this because the vision is all the same. And I think um, our chairwoman, uh, Vivian, and, and, and uh, I think Rainy, managing directors, uh, what they have in the beginning is something there. And then we all believe in it and we want to materialize that. Mm. Yeah. I totally agree. And if anything is that, that's what I also want to bring to the HAPTA as well. Yes. And there's something that I want to learn more too, because I know that like for a POC concept, it's a very, cool thing and right. people like us we understand really yes. well but for people who don't understand enough yes. startup to big corporates or yep. any companies uh, would you mind paint a picture of how the journey is supposed to be right so let us let's talk about uh, proof of concept for any business to use a new technology if you're established you will have it team you have qa team security team that test the technology first that takes about at least six to nine months Right. And then after they say, oh, it's done. So we take care of that by, proof, by building a sandbox where uh, China Resources, is, uh, it's, it's nice enough to donate their uh, space for us to be their sandbox uh, lab. And then that was great. And then they're also part of our uh, subcommittee in our proof of concept. And so this is tested. So you don't need to worry that every single company who uses this technology needs to retest them again. That's one thing. So then after you get tests and stuff like that, you have to go to legal to draft the contract. Mm -hmm. And legal in the corporate world and the legal in the startup world, uh, it's two different hats, right? And then one is worrying about, are you going to sue us? You know, you know, are we going to sue you, the startup, when you fail and things like that and how much money you pay us? Startup cannot afford to pay you anything. Let, let, let put that straight, right? And then the startup, all they care about is really, is not to sue you or, you know, as mainly is that you don't steal their, uh, intellectual property. So there is a dis mismatch. So legal time can take us at least three to six months. And then after that, you're getting the team ready, putting the concept and committee ready is another three to six months. By that time, it's really like two years. The startup disappears really. So it's, it's not con conducive of anybody's time. So hopefully when we do this, uh, we call it uh, screening of the startup and then putting cl uh, client together. We call it the viewing together, all these things, the POC, terms and conditions, legal contract, everything, testing of the technology is all done. If you want it, you should be able to sign within three months. Some startups don't believe me. I've, I've been in the Silicon Valley, so I've been different stages in my life, even to, all the way to the public company, and I've built a unicorn in Hong Kong, right, uh, within 18 months of, of hire. So if you're a startup and you're thinking of making money out of the bat, you're in the wrong business. Startup, the most important thing, important thing is not to make money is to get market share 
because your value is to build the market share with a new tech that number one investor wants to put money in you so you continue to grow because you already have the market share and proven concept second thing is that you stop other uh, competitors from copying you or uh, replicating you fast because if you have the market share it's very really hard for them to come in so that's the most vital thing for a startup to do once you are strong enough big enough and built enough references, then you start making money. That's why a lot of startups do not make money. Alibaba did not make money until they went public after three years later. They got the market share, they got the tech, they got the money backing them up and they become who they are. Airbnb didn't make money after t over 10 years. Look at it, do the long run. So on behalf of the Hong Kong ecosystem, right. I'll say thank you. Because just now what you said, is not only for startup, it's mm -hmm. for corporate to understand innovation. And I feel that my own personal uh, reason and my own journey, a lot of people said, hey, I want money now. Mm -hmm. And I said, innovation only comes for investment. It's right. a long-term gain. It is. You're someone from Silicon Valley right. coming to Hong Kong. Right. And right now you juggle a lot of different projects. Right. And how do you do that? And why do you want to be so active in the innovation space in Hong Kong? Right, because right now I'm heading digital transformation innovation for the Great Eagle Group. I do need to bring in a lot of solution to help with our organization on our hotel side, property management, constructions, retail sales. And I just see it's a win-win solution by helping startups and getting to know them. I learn what's the hottest thing and latest thing in the mindset and how I bring uh, these innovations back to my company to use. You know, and then people say, oh, Kenny, you're doing the POC concept because it's free. Oh, well, it's not because it's free for my company. It's free for anybody who wants to use it. But that's the fastest way for you to get approval in big corporation. A lot of time when you try to innovate or bring in new solution to big companies, there's three barriers they're always put in front of you. How much does it cost? How long does it take? And how many people need to do this? And then if you say that it doesn't cost you anything, you know, they supply other people and you just need to have a coordinator to set up things or let them access to it. And then, you know, and they can do it in a very short period of time, like three months. You can test out the system, test out the solution and see if you want to buy it or not. It takes away all those barriers. And the next thing is just, do you want to try it or not? Is that simple? Yes or no? And uh, that will speed up everybody's whole timeline in innovation, especially, you know, uh, in Hong Kong, we are a little bit dated in terms of innovating because we had it good uh, for a very long time. And especially for real estate, right? We know that in real estate, every time you build something, it gets sold before even built. COVID and then uh, changes all that. Without COVID, we might be five to 10 years behind. Hi, we'd like to give a big shout out to our venue partner, the Center Space. One of the highest co-working space in Hong Kong and located at the heart of Central. If you're looking for a service office, virtual office, co-working space, or event space, Check out their website on thecenterspace.co or visit them at the center. So through your work in Great Ego, other projects you might have, mm -hmm. and also HKPTA, mm -hmm. what do you envision Hong Kong, the real estate industry or prop tech right. can become in the next three, five years time? Fundamentally, the first thing, things that you use a lot of human for, start to use tech, right? Especially things that are dangerous, especially with COVID around, like surveillance, you know, like disinfecting, these are done. And another big thing I realized, not just for uh, prop tech or real estate developer, any kind of business, is a change of workforce. A lot of uh, young millennials is going to take over the world. I think um, uh, it was McKenzie, sorry. And uh, that says that 75% uh, of the workforce will be dominated by millennials in 2025. That's huge. And millennials mindset is different from Gen X. Right. I won't tell you which gen I'm in, hmm. but uh, Gen X people, the average uh, tenure in a company is about 10 years. And the generation before us, average tenure is about 30 years. Average tenure for uh, millennial is about three years. Average tenure for Gen Y, the one later than uh, millennial, is two years, so one year. So there is no such thing as, you know, building loyalty or, or having someone do the work for you. You can't. It needs to be based on system process and procedures mm -hmm. so you can be scalable. And uh, whoever goes and comes and goes, it doesn't impact your fundamental of your operation. So that is a new uh, demand that I think a lot of, not just real estate developers or real estate players, or every industry in the world is not thinking about. So there's a fun little question that I have for you. Mm -hmm. 
if you can have a broadcast right. to the whole Hong Kong or right. the world, right. to the people who profit startup, right. who want to start a start already, mm -hmm. what kind of voice or what kind of message you want to tell them? Right. And regardless of your personal reason or your HPTA perspective, right. what do you want to do that? So, uh, one thing I want to say, regardless you're a startup or an MMC, if you're coming into a new country, you're a startup, really, because you don't know the domain uh, uh, requirements, you don't have any reference site, actually, you don't have any, you might not even have a team here. So you're like a startup too. You have to make sure there is a partner locally that helps you maneuver and uh, get the shortcut out to you to reach a decision maker. And that is what a Hong Kong PropTech is trying to do, is to take away all that barriers and have you and give you direct access to the decision maker who will help with your business. Not only that, on the other side, so we want to make sure with the business uh, owner and decision maker to use technology, we take care of all the uncertainty, the risk factor, the testing, the viability of the company, all the tech out of the way. And then we, how is it, the engagement offer that we, uh, we will put together, right? Regardless, is for the investment committee or the GBA or the content that you're hitting, it, it's that, it's shortened the understanding of what the needs are and also what is the payment, you know, and that would speed up the whole process, at least, I believe, nine to 18 months. Mm. And that's very valuable. So finding that partner is really critical. And then, uh, of course, I'm going to be a little bit biased. Hong Kong PTA is the partner for Hong Kong. So Hong Kong is the launch pad where you start for Asia. And then VI, you know, Hong Kong PTA, you go to other countries. Mm. in the pop tech sector so mm. that's how i see it yeah and then i think that like learning from you mm -hmm. and from everyone else in the mm -hmm. team mm -hmm. um, it's a great grateful thing because mm -hmm. for me a lot of startup guy like me mm -hmm. is that sometimes we just don't know what we're doing mm -hmm. imagine we're in the basement trouble on our things yeah. we're passionate about it yeah. what is wrong yeah. and what if this works yeah the other place cannot you know cannot be done yeah for culture reasons yes. and legal reasons and yeah so on like regulation that. reason taxation yeah. reason yeah mm -hmm. totally understandable so when you're in your startup i'm starting a startup too for yeah. great ego it's called wisdom of living it's the same concept when you entrench in your own startup you're a little biased you also you're a little you know blindsided by a lot of things that you may not be aware of that people have concern having a uh I would say an organization or someone to talk to the bounce idea always helps. And we hope that's what we are, Hong Kong PTA, to be that um, soundboard for uh, client side and for the business side, the vendor side, to say, how do we make a solution easy to access, easy to deploy, and easy to scale? And that's what we want to do. So if anyone wants to join the POC concept, yeah. uh, the cohort, yeah. Uh, or even the committee or be part okay. of it. What's the best way for them to reach out to you and learn more about it? So number one, you go to a website. We have a website, okay? And then join as a member, right? When once you become a member, then you said uh, what my interests are. So, and, or you can ask us, we're, we're very open to say, what are there for me to help me? And these are the things I want help in, which is really critical. First, you have to know what is it you want, right? And then we have made sure that the membership fee for Hong Kong PTA is very reasonable, very low, because we just want to help start. But you know, we are a nonprofit organization. We just need a little funding to help us process all the ideas that we have within the group. Akina, so I'm very excited to join your cohort as well on behalf of Density. And as HPTA is part of the uh, chair, yeah. thanks so much for you know working together. I have so much to learn from you, and I hope this can be around too afterward. I'm sure there is, and I'm very happy. And finally. Get to be interviewed by you this has been fun and uh, i hope that you know what i've shared today really can help a lot of people uh clarify what's the next big step for them in the I'm sure it will world. Be. Thank, thank you. you we at density have been working very hard to bring you in-depth experts opinion from all corners of the industry if you like our content don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon